Hello and welcome to the news with multi-award winning news anchor Dickie Shelton. Hello and a very warm welcome to the news. Tonight we bring you a special news report on the effectiveness of the government handling of the current crisis that is the coronavirus. We will also evaluate the Coronavirus Act 2020 and look at its impact on educational institutions and the subsequent impact on teachers and students. We have many special guest interviews on tonight's show and I went to the lovely town of pont de to meet some of those on the front line who have been impacted by the deadly virus. To help us evaluate the Coronavirus Act and the government's handling thus far, we will be looking at the report by the House of Commons and Science and Technology Committee and Health and Social Care Committee titled Coronavirus, Lessons Learned to Date, Examining the UK's Response to the Covid Pandemic. I am now joined by our first special guest, the Romeo Sierra strain of coronavirus who has reluctantly agreed to come on the show and discuss legislation and policy. Hello Romeo Sierra variant and thank you for agreeing to come and do what cannot be an easy interview for you. How do you like to be addressed? Hello Dickie and uh, thanks for inviting me on the show. Please call me Larry. Larry, do you consider the government's response to the pandemic effective? No, I wouldn't, no. I was first reported in Wuhan, China on the 31st of December 2019. The UK government didn't really start to take action until late March 2020, and the Coronavirus Act was given royal assent on the 25th of March. But what do you expect with this guy in charge and all of his cronies? He's the Prime Minister. He said I was going to go in 12 weeks. And I do think, looking at it all, that we can turn the tide within the next 12 weeks. And I'm absolutely confident that we can send a coronavirus packing. I think it showed poor judgment to say I was going away in 12 weeks. And I think Boris Johnson was getting all his information from this fool. And the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. Uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. And from our shores, we, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. You have to be calm. It'll go away. It will go away. Just stay calm. It will go away. We need a little separation until such time as this goes away. It's going to go away. You do make a very good case there, Larry. And it's safe to say that the initial response was not as preventative as it could have been. The report by the House of Commons was not a very positive evaluation of the government's performance. The report criticises the delays in testing, trace and isolate system and failed in its purpose to avoid lockdowns. The delay in a comprehensive lockdown reflected a fatalism. If the government was quicker to act, they could have reduced the impact on society and saved lives. I agree. More should have been done at an earlier stage. The report was negative in parts, however, it did state the forward planning, agility and decisive organisation of the vaccine development and deployment effort will save millions of lives globally and should be a guide to future government practice. Well, and not an easy virus to manage. I would say the Coronavirus Act has been very effective as it has given the governments of the UK the powers to respond effectively to my progress and ease the burden on frontline health and social care staff. The hardest task for the government, I think, has been convincing the population to follow simple health and safety measures to control infection. That has not been an easy task. The government website is very informative and helpful for information and guidance in many different areas. 
Thank you for your appearance on tonight's show, Larry, and with respect, I hope we never meet again. So moving on, to help us now understand the impact the virus has had on educational institutions, I went to pont and interviewed frontline workers whose jobs have been directly impacted by coronavirus. Wendy is an apprenticeship quality manager, and I asked, asked her what has been the impact on the delivery of the apprenticeships. Okay, so the main impact is the fact that the learners can't come into the office, um, and that has been a big thing. So we've had to implement like different um, resources online for learners. Um, at that impact then, because a lot of people aren't computer literate, so that has also has an impact on that there. Um, safety wise in the office, as you can see, we've got screens up. Um, generally, we wear our masks when we walk around the office, sat down, don't have to wear them. Um, but PPE, hand washing, um, alcohol gels everywhere, and making sure you know, everything's cleaned and we're good. Thank you, Wendy, for your contribution to tonight's show. Next, we interviewed Jeff, a training manager, and we asked him the same question. Right, so the COVID impact on us as a training company has been quite um, significant, having to have uh, courses cancelled due to COVID outbreak and things like that, then obviously we've got to try and reschedule where trainers are going to be or even having to get them to go off sick. Uh, not sick, I suppose, but um, leave for whatever reason. So people using annual leave um, when they didn't want a holiday. So it's actually had personal impacts on families and things like that. Um, trying to just manage the calendar between customers has been a struggle. Um, making sure that people are just wearing their masks and complying with government rules that seem to change on a daily basis. So trying to keep up with them kind of things. Um, just, just a struggle in general. No one knows what they're doing from um, one day to the next on a government level, so it's having an impact on us um, constantly. Um, thank you for inviting me to the show, uh, Richard. It's it's been a uh, it's been uh, the green room was fantastic. Um, I'd love to come again. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for your contribution, and it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show tonight. Next, we interviewed Kelvin, who is a health and social care trainer, and we asked him about the impact COVID has had on his role. The impact this had has, has been massive, uh, especially the the uh, relationship between uh, teacher and student, I suppose, uh, where people turn up in the morning, you're having to take temperatures off them, sometimes ask them to take a lateral flow, they have to wear masks, uh, other PP, sometimes gloves, hand sanitizer. You're kind of already putting barriers in place. Uh, we've had numbers decreased at the peak of COVID as well, uh, when it is peak. We've had cancellations where people have actually had COVID. So yeah, it's been a massive impact. Just like to say thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm already kind of a big deal around here, so, you know. Thank you. thank you, Kelvin, for your contribution to tonight's show. Our last interview is of an 11-year-old student called Lola. We asked her what has been the impact Corona has had on her education. Uh, so... We've had to, uh, at the start of COVID, we had to learn from home and it was quite hard and difficult because of all the distractions around me. And when we got back to school, um, we, it was quite hard, as, like quite annoying because we had to wear masks and keep the um, windows open all the time and it was quite cold. Um, but I think I definitely learned something from COVID to be more aware and uh, like a bit more safe, yeah. Thank you, Lola, for your fabulous contribution to tonight's show. So, in conclusion, the government's response could have been a lot better. The UK and the US government failed to recognise the severity of the virus. On an institution level, they have adapted very well with the use of technology and control measures, such as good hygiene, PPE and social distancing. Teachers and students have made the best of a bad situation and are doing okay. This has been the news. I have been fabulous. Thank you for joining. Good night and God bless.